Hi, welcome to Exploring the Illusion of Free Will. My name is George Ortega, and <laughs> I had planned to do a show called Scientific Theism <clears throat> and Why God's Will is Not a Free Will, but I, um, <clears throat> I had to go into Manhattan on Wednesday um, to do our, our live show in Manhattan. It's on 11 o'clock at <laughs> night every Wednesday, and uh, so I didn't get home until 2 o'clock that morning. I'm just like, I'm tired. I just taped two shows. And so what I want to do instead of that, because I don't want to think, you know, I mean, it, 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 these shows are, are, are tough. So this is going to be like off, um, rea causal reality off the cuff number five. And these shows, I kind of like free myself to just talk about whatever I want to talk about. I don't have to be, I don't have to be uh, constrained by um, what's on the... Uh, on my notes with, you know, a, a, a theme. And incident, you know, I got to explain, it's just, you know, there are reasons what, why I'm saying what it's not. <laughs> All right, whatever. Um, what I want to talk about is like how big this is. This, is, this thing is huge. Um, you've got a human species, all of us, that, um, that are completely deluded about the very fundamental nature of human behavior. I mean, how deluded, I mean, in other words, like, if we believe that we're responsible for, um, I explain, if we believe we have a free will, it's, it's completely delusional. So, I mean, like, um, the significance of this is, this is like, this is the biggest thing that has ever happened on the planet. I mean, um, think about it. We're going from, because like, you have to realize, if you believe in free will, then it makes sense to blame people, and then it makes sense to, you know, because of that blame, punish people. It makes sense to blame yourself, punish yourself with guilt. It makes sense under a free will perspective to, like, if you did something great, to kind of, like, feel, you know, maybe that you're better than, than others and stuff. And, you know, it's just like, it's a categorically different consciousness from understanding that everything is predetermined, that this is just a movie. We're just going along for the ride. You know, reality is just like, you know, cause and effect, things happening. It's, it's a movie. So like, um, why is this so big? Um, again, our, our whole civilization, our legal system, our system of rewards and punishments in, um, in economic, you know, our economic activity, um, just our, our, our way of relating to, um, to each other and ourselves, you know, it's just like, it's, it's, it's based on, on, on a delusion. And, and the reason I, I, I say it's a delusion rather than an Ill, it, it's both an illusion. I mean, it depends how you want to look at it. But like, for example, there are some illusions like, um, like for example, like that the earth is flat, okay? You know, you might have that illusion the earth is flat. Fine, if you, if you through various scientific means, um, logical means, determine that the, uh, that the earth is not flat, you know, as we've done, but you continue to, you know, if you're the one who's done these calculations, you, you understand the earth is not flat, but you continue to believe the earth is flat, then that's when, you know, the, the illusion of a flat earth becomes a delusion of a flat earth. Okay. Um, so, yeah, <laughs> it's funny. This is, I, I, um, I, this, uh, yeah, I, I thought it might be easier to do a, um, a causal reality off the cuff show instead of uh, keeping to the notes. And I'm not sure. I'm not sure that, um, that it will be, but that's all right. Because like, Sometimes, you know, this is episode number 53, and, and this, this is a test because, like, there's, we're kind of conditioned in school, like, to not repeat ourselves much. Like, if we're doing an essay and we say the same point two or three times, um, you know, we're saying, no, no, I'll just say it once or twice, you know, you know. And, like, with this show, you know, it's a, a lot of repetition is required because that's the that's the only way we're going to understand this, and and the other the other part of it is that um, it's not just about understanding um, logically why free will is impossible. 
it's being able to understand it strongly enough and clearly enough to integrate it into your normal way of perceiving reality. So, um, <laughs> so doing these shows kind of like forces me to think about this more um, in a way that, that's, that's clear and, and hopefully um, strongly logical. And um, so it's, it's kind of a good way to, because <clears throat> basically what we're doing, you know, this show is um, we're creating we're creating a uh, a new species again. I want I want to stick to this theme. You know, when it, when, <laughs> when I do an off the cuff, um, I may um, move around a bit, but but this is the big point in a sense that. Um, <clears throat> You know, our species, Homo sapien, Homo meaning man, sapien meaning um, knowledgeable. So it's the man that knows or human being that knows, you know, man, woman that knows. Um, we don't know. We're completely deluded about the very fundamental aspect of human behavior, that, that it's not up to us, that it's completely causal and, you know, free will is a myth. So, so like... So as we transcend, overcome this illusion of free will, we're going to have to create a new, and I'm going to do a show on this. <clears throat> I'm losing my voice. No, no. We're going to have to do an, um, a show on this. Basically, we're, we're, going, to have, we're going to have to um, create a new designation for our species. Now, granted, I don't know if this, like, this could happen in, in God, this could happen in like five years. I mean, with... With the level of communication on the planet, um, how how information can be just passed instantaneously throughout the world. Um, if the world wanted to, if we're fated to, everybody on the planet could get this within two years easily. My God! But so, like, yeah, what happens is like, and I can't predict when this will happen because you know who knows. Uh, but but it seems like it'll happen relatively sooner than than later. And so, like, the, you know. I'm, I'm thinking, like, what should we call our species? Because it, it is like evolution, you know, we, we designate species sometimes, phyla and all that stuff, based on physiological criteria, you know, body um, type and, and just like body anatomy, just, you know, physiology. But, but, but that's not the only kind of evolution to, that takes place in a species. In other words, like, this evolution from, from understanding, from... from Believing that we have a free will, to understand that, that we don't, to understanding that that everything is a movie. Can you see? Can you understand how different the two perspectives are, and how, because they're so different, it's imperative. It, it's you know, um, to the extent that we understand this is humanity, that that our textbooks get this right, like they get evolution and uh, the laws of physics and all this stuff right. To the extent that our planet understands this. Um, we're no longer Homo sapiens. Um, you know, I'm, I'm trying to think of a good word, I, I, uh, term. I came up with before Homo causal will conscious. That that's a bit awkward. Um, and I, we may want to lose the Homo and stuff because, like, you know, I mean, like in our American, you know, I guess, you know, I don't know what it'd be like in other countries, but like Homo has a connotation with being gay and stuff, so you don't want to confuse people about that. So, so this would be like um, another word for 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 Homo and uh, something like that, and also like Homo means man, and we want to do so, something that also includes women. I know, like when you say man, it's supposed to include women also, but you know, we should we should have a, a term that's more gender gender neutral in that way. Um, and but all right, I'm, I got to come up with it. You know, I can't. Uh, I got to come up with a better term. When I come up with a better term, hopefully I'll do a show on it. Okay, and I say hopefully because I don't have a free will. Because if I had a free will, I would say I would absolutely do a show on it, and I would absolutely do it. But okay, so that enough for that. Um, what else? I want to talk about my book. Um, I just wrote a book called Exploring the Illusion of Free Will, and. Um, and it was cool because, like, this is like perfect example, perfect explanation, description of, of one reason I know I don't have a free will. I tried to write a book on why I wouldn't have a free will back in 1997. I got about 40 pages into it, and then I started editing, and um, then it just like, 
for whatever reason, it stopped. I couldn't. And, and I always say to my, my friends and stuff, if I had a free will, that book refuting free will would have been written in 1997. So all right, so I, I didn't do that. But, you know, I, um, what I did is um, I didn't know how it would work out, but, but, I, but I transcribed the first 18 episodes of this show, okay? And, um, and that's the book. You know, I transcribed it, did some editing, um, and then, you know, I was like really pleasantly surprised that, uh, that it flows, you know, that, um, that it, it's like, it makes sense. You know, there's a logical progression from episode to episode that, you know, translates um, to the chapters. And um, so this is cool. Now, I got to promote this book. Okay. Um, I'm going to promote myself. I'm going to promote myself because <laughs> here's the thing. I'll talk about the book later. Okay. Right now... There are two people in the world who are doing more than anyone. And maybe we may be like, no, there are a few people, there are some people on the internet that are making videos on this, but they're inspired by this. Uh, the Messenger, who's producing our, our um, Manhattan show, and, and, and me, we're the only two people that are really doing this um, with any kind of success. Success. I mean, like, we are succeeding. You know, the, uh, the, our cable, um, there are 500,000, I think, um, uh, subscribers to Time Warner Cable in Manhattan. And I don't know how many people watch our show at 11 o'clock at night, you know, live show and all, but a lot of people are watching it. And so basically, um, the messenger and I are basically leading the world to a new consciousness. We're, we're, we're effectively refuting the myth of free will. Philosophers, psychologists, thinkers have tried to do this for decades, for centuries, for millennia. For, and, and why do most of them, what, all of them? Because I mean, like, <laughs> why did all of them fail to succeed uh, to, uh, to um, well, nah, you know, a lot of it is like, for example, a lot of these guys are sharp, like Spinoza. If Spinoza had uh, access to a local cable TV show like in Manhattan and White Plains back when he was living, um, he would have easily convinced everyone because these guys got it. These, you know, these guys are sharp. But, um, but now we're, you know, and the cool thing about this, okay, Basically, <laughs> the messenger and I, me more so, because I started before him, he, you know, the messenger, he's a good friend of mine. Um, I created a meetup in, uh, in Manhattan, uh, April, I think that, um, it was found, I found it at April 10th or so, or April 7th, 2010, okay? And um, a few months later, this guy know me from the meetup. I asked him, listen, you want to do a show on, on this? And he said, yes. So um, November of that year, we started taping. By January, we had, um, you know, presented our first episode. So anyway, The Messenger um, starts coming to the meetups, I think, um, when was it? Um, I think it might have been March 2011. And he's got this, this idea. He says, he says, listen, I've been wanting to do a, a cable show in Manhattan. Let's, you know, I said, let's do one on free will. Or, or he said it, whatever. And so we do this. And um, what's the point? The point is that, is, is that, it, that it, it's working. It's working. Um, because of our work over the last couple of years, um, especially over the last year, this guy, you know, Sam Harris, is the best-selling um, author. He's coming out with a book refuting free will it's coming out in march and once that comes out it's going to be like all over the news there, there's a there's another guy who came out with a book which is it's confusing because he gets it right but then he gets it wrong it's this guy uh, michael gazaniga who's um he calls himself the father of cognitive neuroscience um i don't know much about it i haven't you know read his work except um basically what he says in the book is like that we everything is causal you know everything is the result of cause and effect but we still have moral responsibility so that kind of like tells me he doesn't really get it so basically what I'm trying to say is like um, Sam Harris is the, the one guy who is I think you know he's gonna um, we kind of like created the interest that um, that got him to the point of saying hey if I write a book on this for the general audience a bestseller or whatever that people will read it okay so so basically yeah um, we, we and, and it's a cool thing it's a cool thing to like be um, be part of this this 
this monumental um, historical event, historical happening. But, uh, but the cool thing, the very, 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 very cool thing, so like if this was a show about anything else, It'd be, it'd be pretty hard for me or anyone else to come out up here like touting how we started it all. It's kind of like, you know, Gore with the Internet. I think he, he said, I started again. He was like misquoted or whatever. He was part of, I think, funding the, the, um, the Internet, you know, when it first got started. But, but with this thing, like the messenger and I can say, yeah, we're doing this. We're leading the universe to a new consciousness. And we can do this in complete humility. This doesn't like, you know, it makes me kind of feel good that the universe is using us in, in this way. But, but that's, that's, the, that's the beauty of understanding the free will's illusion. You know, you do something as great as, as this is like the greatest thing ever. I mean, like, if, if somebody, like, comes up with a way to, like, make everyone happy or everyone good, or if someone comes up with um, a solution for cold fusion and, and our energy problems are solved, I think those three things would be bigger than this because happiness is the... Um, the goal of everything and goodness is what creates happiness and if we're not around to to live you know if we don't have enough energy to live obviously we can't experience it so the fusion is important but aside you know but those things haven't happened yet so like this is the biggest biggest thing that has ever happened in the history of the world <laughs> which is cool and, and i can't take credit for it <laughs> but um back to the book um all right, the idea is like with the book, I'm gonna, I'm, I wanna go on this theme of like the best. This, this book, um, Exploring Illusion of Free Will, it's uh, only 164 pages, and I'm actually gonna come out with a revised edition because I, I rushed to press. I, there, it's got some like, you know, typos, it's a few errors. I wanna just like, you know, tighten it up and all. But this book is gonna turn out to be the greatest book ever written because like, I mean like, I don't know, Harris, I haven't read his book yet, it hasn't come out, but I have a feeling he's gonna, he's a neuroscientist, okay? So what is he gonna do? He's gonna deal with the neuroscience. He's gonna explain why don't we, have, we don't have a free will from the perspective of neuroscience, which is good, because it helps people understand scientifically the causality in the situation. But you have to understand that like, what prevents free will isn't the, the neuroscience per se, it's the level below, more fundamental um, than neuroscience, which is the level of physics which is the level of either quantum or classical physics where, where you know, everything is causal. So um, basically, no, no, what I'm trying to say, what I'm trying to say is like also uh, the book, <laughs> Exploring Illusion of Free Will, the, the book um, that, um, that the universe compelled me to, to transcribe from the first 18 episodes of this show, um, it's repetitive and it, it doesn't get sidetracked by, you know, a lot of extraneous, unnecessary information about the workings of, of you know, our, our neurology or, our, you know, our physiology, you know, because like, or it doesn't even, it, it doesn't, um, it doesn't dignify, you know, so many of the, um, of the arguments that, that philosophers have come up with to try to save free will because, the, you know, the, um, as the book explains, take any argument for free will, you ask the person who believes it, well, um, give me an example of a decision that you believe is freely willed, okay? And once they do that, then you ask them, well, does, does that decision have a cause? And um, if they say no, they, they, they don't understand causality. If they say yes, then that, um, that shows how... Um, that thought obviously wasn't freely willed. So, which, which, um, okay, we got about, about eight minutes left. Um, so yeah, so the my book, it um, it sticks to the two fundamental reasons why free will is impossible. The first one is causality. If everything has a cause, then free will. If it, Free will is impossible because what's happening now is a direct causal result of what happened before we were born. You know, it's clear as day. And the other reason, which I can get into because I have time now, which can be cool. The other reason is we have an unconscious. Now think about this. 
when we make any kind of decision, it's got to be based on something because that's like, you know, the pride of having this free will is like, I did it, you know, it was like me for, for reasons of my own that I can take credit for and all this stuff. But, um, but here, here's the thing, you know, if we have, if we're going to like make a, a decision based on more than one, for example, factor, um, you got to think, where are these factors stored? For example, there's a factor, a hedonic imperative. In other words, before we decide to do something, we're going to say to ourselves, well, is this going to be, is this going to bring me or the people I care about greater pleasure, greater happiness? Okay? Then we have a moral imperative. Is this, is this that I'm considering doing right? Is there anything, you know, could this possibly be wrong? And then we have experiences in the past that might kind of like impact our decision in different ways, things we've learned. And so this, this stuff, we cannot keep this stuff in our conscious mind, all these factors that are going to go into our decisions. So they're in our unconscious. And now here's the key. We're not aware of our unconscious. Um, what happens is, When we, when we do anything, our consciousness is, our consciousness is, is our unconscious making us aware of, of what it has decided. In other words, right now I'm talking, you hear words coming out, and I don't know what I'm going to be saying until I say it. I have a general idea, but even that comes from the unconscious. Let me try to explain this a bit more clearly. Um, if all of the considerations, maybe not all, because sometimes there's some real-time perceptions, you know, um, you know, we hear things, we see things, but even that I think might actually, you know, we're conscious of, it, of these things, but I think also we're on, you know, our unconscious is also conscious of these things. In other words, like there's um, subliminal perception, which is like perception by the unconscious. But the, the basic point is that if, if everything that we um, need to make a decision is in our unconscious and we're not, we can't access our unconscious in real time, then what, what that has to mean is that all of our decisions must be made at the level of the unconscious. Think about it. If all the data is in the unconscious and we can't access the unconscious, the processing of the data, the decision making has to be at that level. And that, that's another, so anyway, <laughs> all right, we, I think you got that. So, so the, the, the good thing about the book, Exploring Illusion Free Will, is that um, maybe I should call this, um, I don't know. Uh, the good thing about the book is that it stays to the, those two basic reasons why we don't have a free will. It, it, it doesn't, I mean, um, and it, it, it presents some other reasons. Like, for example, um, Sometimes people say, well, I experience my will as free. You know, I, of course I have free will. It's, it's, I, it's so clear to me. But, but when they say that, what they're really saying is that I experience a will. You know, we, we experience making decisions. It's only when we kind of like think about the decision that some of us wrongly conclude that we made that decision free of factors we're not control, in control of. And that's the thing. Okay, we got about... Three minutes and 40 seconds. So, so yeah, this book is like the greatest book ever written because like if humanity is completely deluded about, you know, the very fundamental nature of, of human behavior, to write this, um, this delusion, to write us, would be bigger than anything. I mean, like the Bible, for example. The Bible is a great book um, on wisdom. It has a lot of wisdom. I've, re I've read the Bible. Um, you know, I'm, I tend to be religious. I don't, I don't buy into like the Adam and Eve stuff. I don't buy into a lot of this stuff, but like, you know, the Bible is very good in a lot of ways. For, you know, so in, in some ways, like for example, some ways it's like, you know, you got to wonder what we're thinking. For example, in, uh, in biblical times, um, slavery was condoned. And even so, like, even, um, well, I guess back, um, back then, um, I was going to say, you know, they ate animals, but I guess maybe they had to eat animals. You know, that's something we're, we're um, struggling with. 
but but yeah this is like um so the bible is good but like no the bible has everyone deluded if, if, if the bible you know saint augustine you know makes the conclusion although that's not in the bible but um if it's the premise if, if people who kind of like go to the bible you know just have it as the premise that that, that that gives us free will and that's just not the way things are then we need another reformation we need another kind of you know an, an, <laughs> my 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 producer and co-host is actually um coming out with it with a book i better not say what it is but it, it's similar to this um but basically we need a new story we need a new story that makes sense the, the creation story doesn't make sense and we kind of get that now um this story of, of, of our having a free will doesn't make sense and a last point um what's very 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 interesting is that you know the universe compelled made humanity get this wrong we didn't decide on our own to think that we have a free will to think that we're these mini gods you know who can do whatever we want we were compelled completely the universe made it impossible for us to to conclude anything but that and and what's very cool is that the universe now has decided to disavow us of this illusion to to, to clue us in on, on on the reality and what's really cool this came up um on the um, myth of free will show we did in manhattan on wednesday a caller called in and asked me well you know does this have any relation um and actually no they asked he asked if the global occupy movement of the 99 percent against the one percent has any relation to the mayan prophecy the 2012 thing and i think it does i think it's part of it but i think this is also part of it i think that like you know the mayan prophecy it's like an end of a 5,000 whatever year cycle it's a new beginning so like for for civilization reality humankind to understand that free will is an illusion and our wills are causal is monumental it is like the 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 um the 2012 phenomenon you know coming to be along again with it with the global uh, revolutional okay this has been causal reality number five and um yeah it was good it's good uh so next time you know um i'll be back with, with more shows on this i hope you're having a great day and hopefully i'll see you soon thanks <laughs>